please, you don't have to stop because of me. It's your guys' meeting. It's all good. Uh, we'll make it really short and sweet today. Um, I don't really have a topic, but I finished a book today called Training Camp. Um, and I thought I'd share some some insights with you guys. Um, it was an audio, so I didn't actually read it, read it, read it, read it. Um, I listened to it. Uh, John Gordon. Um, I've listened to three or four of his books, and out of the four, I've liked three of them so far. So it might be um, something that you guys want to look into. Um, they're very easy listens. They, he makes it almost um, to the point that it's just like a, it's more of a story, but you you learn a lot of life lessons throughout the story that he's that he's giving. And this one was based um, on a football player, and he was someone that was getting went to training camp um, for the NFL, and he worked his whole life into doing that, and um, finally made it to a training camp. Um, his very first game, he hit, made a touchdown and um, then went and made another touchdown. But on his second touchdown through the very first day of training camp, he twisted his ankle. So um, the story is about him um, to see if he gets cut from the team or not. And he's worked his whole life towards, you know, making an NFL team. And so I, I'm not going to ruin the whole book for you if you guys decide to, to listen to it. Again, it's called Training Camp. But it's pretty much from – him spraining to his ankle until they decide whether they makes the cut or not. Um, and then he goes through different mind training. His the coach that he was working with said, you know, to be the best, you got to give it 150%. And we all know that, you know, when we say we're giving it 150%, some people are actually only giving 70%. Right. So this whole book is about him training his thoughts and changing, changing his mind. Um, to be able to actually give 150% to whatever he, he did in football. Um, but it pertains to, to everybody. It pertains to anybody that wants to be great. Um, so I'm just going to share some, some things that um, will make you and help you be your best. Um, so I got some notes here. Just give me a sec here. Okay, so number one, the best know what they want. I think a lot of people spend their lives being average or good at something, but they don't strive to be great. The best of the best not only know what they want, but they want it more. So, for example, um, Scotty Hobbs is where he's at because he wanted it more than anybody else, right? He, he fought through the, the struggles that he had, um, and he's had lots. Um, including just last year when he shattered his collarbone. He could have given up after that, but he didn't. He kept going um, through um, people dying in his family, through his sister being tossed in, in jail because of a drug addiction. There was a lot of stuff that he, he mentally had to deal with to get to where he is today. So it wasn't all easy for him, right? Uh, same with Lindsay Matway. Lindsay Matway, you guys know her story. Um, she... Um, almost lost her child. Um, she was bankrupt, four hundred thousand dollars in debt. Uh, she had nothing. She didn't, you know, she didn't have a degree or anything. She was a bartender and a and a model. Um, so she really didn't have anything either. But she wanted something bigger for her life, as we all do, or we wouldn't be here, right? So um, again, number one, the best know what they want. Um, it's a good point to bring in the vision boards. I know some of you have started, some of you haven't completed. Um, I did one my first year and I had an amazing year, um, but I haven't done one since. And maybe that's why I'm struggling. You know, um, you make excuses. The program I used the very first year, I can't seem to get it to work anymore. Um, but there are other ways to, to make vision boards. So when you visualize what you want, um, then you know exactly what you want. Uh, number two, the best want it more. We cannot measure desires in terms of merely thoughts and wishes. The best not only do the things that others won't do and invest the time in others won't invest, but they do with passion and intent to get better. The best are never, never satisfied with where they are. Um, and I think that that's probably, I, and I'm not going to speak for you guys, but I'm very hard on myself when I don't achieve something, right? Because I know there's so much more out there for me. Um, and a lot of it is, is believing in myself to go out and get it. Because as we all know, you know, I'll hit my 10 and, I, and then I stop. And I, I don't have the answer. Why do I stop? 
I was never like that before. But you, you know, you hit success cup 10, you hit success cup five, um, and you just stop and you just don't go anymore. And we just went that extra mile. Um, we'd get things so much faster, right? Um, because we want it more. Uh, number three, the best are always striving to be better. If you're striving to get better, then you are always growing. And if you are always growing, then you're not comfortable. To be the best, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable and embrace it as a part of your growth process. It's a process. The best see where there is room for improvement and their humility and passion drives them to improve. The average ones, however, don't see it and don't want to see it. The fact is, the fact is past success does not determine future success. Future success is a result of how you work and prepare and practice and how you strive to improve every day. It's a commitment that the best of the best make every week every day every hour every moment force yourself to be uncomfortable so i'm going to show share a little story with that we all know to strive to get better that's why we do personal development right that's why we talk to our teams about doing personal development if someone's struggling we get them to do personal development um it helps us grow it helps us release that negativity it gives us self-confidence and so forth um i'm always pushing my team to become uncomfortable and for example like benita benita went on stage in front of you know 200 people and told her story and that was very uncomfortable for her um something that's very uncomfortable for me to do is to meet someone in per person and talk about what we do right uh, all my stuff is done through messaging i rarely get on the phone um and i don't know why because i'm very good on the phone once i get on the phone with people but it's out of my comfort zone i don't like doing it I, I stutter sometimes. It's just completely out of my comfort zone. Um, but today I went, you know, I reconnected with someone that I knew 20 years ago. He found me on Facebook. Um, I didn't talk about Beachbody at all with him. Um, we just kind of, you know, introduced ourselves all over again. Um, and then just a few days ago, he asked me to come over because he saw what I was doing with my workouts and so forth. And he saw all the testimonials from like Benita and all my other challengers and people that comment on my page and he's like, you seem to know what you're talking about. So can you come over and sit down with me and my wife? Um, for one, it was a 40 minute drive. I had to go all the way out to Fort Saskatchewan to, to talk to my friend, um, which was a huge, um, took me out of my comfort zone for one. It's a long drive to go do that. Uh, number two, sitting in front of somebody, I know how to do it on Facebook. Okay. How do I do it? And, to people that you know face to face is, is very tough and it, i wasn't sure if i can do it tara and i did it with a group of three people before but that was the only time we've ever i've ever done that we've ever done that um in front of somebody um but i was like you know what i'm gonna go do it i did it um i explained everything and it, i felt good about it because i it made me realize is if i can get personal and face to face with these people they see my passion they see you know, that I, I know what I'm talking about. They see that I'm real about what we do and I'm real about what I do and going through my struggles. And I put all the struggles on the table. I didn't say it was all easy for me. Like they see my pictures and now I got to go show up and now I'm 20, 20 pounds heavier, right? That was huge for me to do that. Um, because I think people will judge me for, you know, being up 20 pounds. And, you know, I found that they didn't. I was honest about my struggles and they accepted that. And we just kind of moved forward. Um, so I helped him. Uh, I helped his wife. So we got 21 day fix for her and um, hardcore for him. Um, and the reason why we didn't just do the 21 day fix, um, 21 day fix was for her. She has MS. And for him, he's very, he's in construction. So he's always on the go. He's doing a lot of maintenance and stuff. But he's also the president of a football um, what do you call it? Football up team, the organization. He's the president of the Fort Saskatchewan football organization there. Um, and he has what he, he, he has a 13 year old little boy who's 190, 190 pounds at five foot five. And when we discussed his goals, they also told me that they wanted to, you know, help their son. And his son is very active in football, but he's a big boy. And you know what? All the coaches see him as, oh, we want you, we want you. But they want him for his size. Problem is his size can't handle his, his, um, 
his bones can't handle his size. So when he's getting hit, he's getting hit hard. And um, they've actually decided to pull him out of football this year because he just can't handle the hits with the size he is. His, his muscles and his, and his bones just can't handle his weight. So we flipped it. We um, we sat down and discussed goals for his son. And we I, I brought up hardcore because it is a drill-based you know program. Um, and I'm sure a lot of football teams use the same type of drills for for these young kids. So um, I, I made the suggestion of flipping it with him and say, you know what, you this year you're not going to play football, but this is what we're going to do. You know, we're going to do the drills. We're going to do this and we're going to work it. So he's going to work on it on his his weight because he is a heavier, heavier set boy. <laughs> um, but they really – they're going to do it as a family. So it was nice that I got out of my comfort zone and I did that because I showed confidence in myself that even though I was uncomfortable, I went and did it. And I know the next time I do it, I will be even better than I did this time. Right. Um, it's not always going to be a win, but you're growing every time you go and do something, you're pushing yourself out of the box. For example, like Nita, I made her go on stage and she did it. And now she can, you know, lead by doing that. Right. Um, so number four, the best do ordinary things better than everyone else. Work hard on the right things. It means you must identify the very little things that are fundamental to your success. Then you must focus on them, practice them, strive to execute them to perfection. So keeping our business very simple. Um, you always hear it, three vital behaviors. If we focus on those and those alone, we're going to see success. Um, will it take time? Absolutely. Because you have to master those three vital behaviors. You know, um, you have to have to master the inviting. You have to master the, the conversations. Um, you have to master your workouts. We all know we struggle with workouts. We're not all on 100% every day, right? Um, but if we master those things, those three simple things, our business will strive, right? Your business will strive. My business will strive. But at the end of the day, we will strive as individuals because we're focused on those three things. Yes, the like pages and the websites and YouTubes and videos, they're all fantastic. They're a part of the business but they're not needed in the beginning. That's to open up your market to everything else, right? Um, but if we can focus on the three things, that's the vitals of our business. That's how we're gonna grow as individuals. That's how we grow as a team. Um, number five, the best Zoom focus. Um, there's no secret recipe. If you, increment, if you incrementally improve each day, each week, each month, by the end of the year, you'll see remarkable results and growth. When you Zoom focus on the purpose and the outcome, the outcome takes care of itself, master the fundamentals. So again, going back to those three vital behaviors, but continuing to have that Zoom focus. Um, Benita and Tara know from my first year when I decided to go, I was focused. I was on focus on one thing and I was going there and I got there. Um, and then the focus went this way. Um, the hip injury came into place. Um, things fell down. Um, I watched things go up, things go down. And my focus wasn't on where I wanted to be. Right. So, um, again, it's not I'm not hitting the 20s and 30s like I used to. I'm content on hitting on the 10, but that's because I'm not zoomed. So if we get zoomed and we go straight to those three vital behaviors and we do them consistent every day, by the end of the year, you're going to see some huge success. We might not see it now, but 12 months from now can change. I was just looking at I don't know if you guys follow Jamie Fitzpatrick and Kim Fitzpatrick, um, five star diamond. Um, Jamie just hit five star diamond just recently. Um, they are doing it as a family. They got him, Kim, his wife, and it looks like his brother is as well. Um, his brother's a three-star diamond. So he's number three in Canada right now. He has went from $114 a week to in 56 weeks, 8,000 a week um, because he has that focus. Okay. And I've talked to him and he's not doing anything different than what we're doing. He's just being consistent with everybody and he's talking, and he's getting referrals and he keeps going. Um, he's not doing ads. It's strictly his warm market. Um, and with his warm market reaching out, um, and having those, those referrals come in, um, he does focus very, very laser focus on his challenge group is by what he told me. Um, he makes it that the challenge groups are so good and people are seeing results that, they are referring people to him. And I don't know if you guys saw it. Like he's under Miguel's team. Um, he had success club 89 last month. Kim, his wife was success club 49. And I'm not sure where, where the brother was, but that just goes to show how focused that 
he is. And he's a year out, right? And he's still working that warm, warm market per se, according to him. Um, but a lot of it is referrals, right? So when you focus on those three vitals and really give it everything you've got, it all comes in. And if you get to the point that, you know, our challenge groups are tight, like really tight. Um, again, that's something Benita taught me because the way she was running her challenge group before, I was doing a single post a day. Then I, as I was watching Benita, because I made sure I, whenever Benita popped something in the group, I was instantly told that she did. And I was watching how many times a day she was posting. I was watching what she was posting. Um, and they were fantastic. She was doing three to four posts a day. And now we have the option of doing live video to our, our private groups, our accountability groups. So you can actually, if you have it on your phone, you can do a live video right into your group, which is going to be fantastic. And um, the reason why I think it's fantastic is because, yeah, I've got the YouTube, you know, week one, week two videos and so forth. But now I can show up every day and I can do a five o'clock workout post in the group. People are work, waking up and they're already seeing, holy shit, Sean's done. I got to get my ass together. Right. Same with you, Benita. I don't know if you have access to that, but you and Rob doing a live workout first thing in the morning. Bam, it's in your group. It's already done. It's posted. Plus, you do your little blurb or you can do a live video blurb about it. Um, <clears throat> and your challengers wake up and see that and they say, OK, well, if she can do this. I can time to get out of bed i think it's only for um iphone i don't think android has that yet okay i, I don't have it on my, I, don't have it I know it will be released soon um i don't have an android so i'm not sure if that works or not i know tara didn't have it but i think she might have it now what? you have the live on your phone now yeah okay. yeah the android doesn't have it yeah so it, it will be released soon um so what jamie was saying was he's really focused in with his with his challenge groups um and i actually i thought everything was coming through kim but it's not it's actually going through jamie because kim is only a one star or not even a one star she's just a diamond um but those are two people i would uh, you know i suggest following um and even if you have any questions reach out he's you know i, I met him in jamaica very briefly um but we've had a ton of conversations already on the phone just recently. It's just because I, I was reaching out and when I saw, you know, success of 90 and all this team having this huge success in, in over the year, years, I just, um, I wanted to make sure I wasn't, wasn't missing anything. Right. And we're all, we're on the same page. And it, it's like Carrie thing, Carrie says everything happens to certain individuals at certain times when it, when it's ready. Right. And I guess it, for them, it's, it was just, it's their time. Um, but he's not doing anything different than what we're doing. Um, again, you guys know your challenge groups. I know how I can improve in my challenge groups, right? So it's, you guys have to really focus into your, what you're doing and see what can be improved. Um, so number six, the best are mentally stronger. Being mentally strong means you stay positive through adversity. It means you're resilient when facing pressure, challenges, and change. Weed the feed. Each day you need to weed out the negative and feed it with the positive. You need to weed out the self-doubt and the negative talk and feed the positive thoughts, memories, and visuals. Um, we find this all the time with our team, um, especially with my team. Um, I've had lots of coaches just go through stuff in their lives and, you know, they, they just fall off. They just give up. Um, this, is, this is pretty much saying is weed through all that, that negative, right? Again, going back to personal development, if you're struggling with something, personal development will help you get through that. Um, so I found that point really, really good. Um, the best overcome their fears. Those that succeed, those that reach to the pinnacles of greatness are able to face this battle, overcoming fear and win. Um, for example, when it comes to Mike and inviting, if Mike invites a little bit more, it'll become easier and that fear will go away right? Because he steps out of his box and actually does, does, does some inviting in the beginning. My first year, I didn't send a single invite. Um, but my second year I made a choice of didn't matter who it was. I press that send. Um, I was even to the point, like, I don't know if you guys know these names, but Kreisha Turner, she's a singer out, out of Canada and Carl Wolf. They're on my list. I, their name came up and I sent them an invite. You never know. Right. Um, it's because I wasn't afraid of the, the no. I wasn't afraid of anything. Um, the best sees the moment. When the best are in the midst of the performance, they are not thinking, what if I win? What if I lose? They're not interested in what the moment produces, but they are only concerned with what the, they produce in the moment. Rather than hiding from pressure, they rise to the occasion. As a result, the best define the moment rather than letting the moment define them. Um, so really, 
at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you win. It doesn't matter if you lose. It matters that you show up. It matters that you're doing better than you, you did yesterday every single day. And if you're doing that, then you're winning, right? Um, so seize the moment, whatever it may be. Um, the best leave a legacy. You leave a legacy by living and working with bigger purpose. You leave a legacy by making your life about more than just you. You leave a legacy by moving from success to su significance. Um, so, for example, when we're hitting success club, that's a success. When we're changing a life, that's a significance, right? Um, I could die tomorrow, and I know Benito may never remember me for all the success club points I hit, but she really will remember me because of the day that I helped change her life. That's a legacy. That's leaving your mark on the world. And if we can all do that and leave from our hearts, um, it's, it's building our legacy. That's what it is. I never really understood that until I, I listened to that today. Um, the best make everyone around them better. The point is to strive to be the best and inspire others to be their best. Because it's in, stri it's in the striving where you find greatness, not in the outcome. So, you know, like I learned a lesson a long time ago when I was just going for rank. Um, that's what I thought the, the greatness was, but it's, it's really not. The greatness comes when we're helping others achieve greatness. And then as that's happening, you, you're feeling um, <clears throat> that real, real greatness. And again, that's going back to leaving your legacy leading your legacy um and then there's one more the best lead the best tap into the greater power than themselves um we are here as coaches to help um everybody but it's not us alone that's doing that we're doing it as a team and if we can tap into that as as a team um then we're realizing that it's not just about us it's about everybody as a whole and when you do that and you combine everything else that i've just talked about and i'll post this in the into the group so you guys can actually see it um when you combine all those things you really become the best of the best and it's up to you to decide whether you're the best of the best now or if you can grow um i can grow there's a lot of things i can grow at um there's a lot of things i can do to be better um but to do that i gotta show up every day and i'll be honest i haven't been showing up every day when it comes to the business right um and I, that's that's why i just hit four today because i haven't done anything in a week um so I know what, what I got to do to improve. I know what I got to do to to help my team improve, you know, my personally sponsored coaches. Um, and you guys got to decide what you can do to improve and what you can do to help your team improve. Um, other than that, I that's all I really wanted to share today. I don't have any, any, any more. Um, do you guys have any questions or anything for today? All right, then that's that. You guys have yourself a fantastic week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. And this is recorded, so I'll post it in the group.